So, over the past few months, actually, I'd say, actually for a stretch of time now, I have been listening to the various um, written works in audio form from Yahtzee Croshaw, best known on the internet as the person behind the Zero Punctuation video game reviews. He also writes science fiction and fantasy-ish um, novels, which he also reads uh, it, if you want to go to Audible and grab them. I do recommend them. He reads them very well. He should. He's been doing that kind of vocal work for quite a while on Zero Punctuation. Now, at this point, I have listened to not everything of his, but most of his stuff. Definitely his more recent work. But there's one in particular I wanted to highlight because of what he does and how he goes about basically approaching the entire world. I just thought it was really interesting in the degree to which he basically took one specific thing. So this is the world created for his book, will save the galaxy for food, which also has a sequel called Will Destroy the Galaxy for Cash, which I've also listened to. Uh, but I, I want to talk mainly about the first one here. Now, the sci-fi world in which this story takes place is not especially unique. It's an indeterminate amount of time in the future. There are human colonies at various points. There are alien races that we are interacting with. There is interstellar travel. There is, you know, adventure and heroism and, and you know, corporations and are running too much stuff and, you know, the, the scum and villainy and, you know, the, the underground and smugglers and all this sort of stuff. It's... It's very just outer space adventure. It's, it's pretty standard. Except what he did to make his world stand out. Aside from, you know, some of the character work that he does, which is also pretty good. I don't want to make it sound like this is the only selling point. But this is what he does to make his approach to this fairly generic sci-fi setting his own. He picks one piece of technology that is not necessarily completely standard. Well, some version of this is not uncommon in a lot of sci-fi, but he really drills down to, if this was available, how widely would it be used? And then how many industries, businesses, and individuals would it completely devastate and uproot because it just made them obsolete? The technology is what uh, is called quantum tunneling or quant tunneling. So it's a, basically, it's just a way to get from one place to another right, over great distances. And, you know, like I said, variations of this exist in a lot of sci-fi, whether it's beam, you know, beam me down, Scotty, etc., and that sort of thing, you know, teleporters and whatnot. It's that on a slightly grander scale. Basically, once you have set up a quant tunnel, you can connect it to any other quant tunnel that is set up and exists. So, ra so when it comes to colonizing new places, they only have to send somebody out to you know, explore a new planet once. And then they just have to set up a quant tunnel and then they can just march through whatever they need to terraform it or build a strip mall or whatever else. Um, so, quant tunneling is obviously really big for transportation because you don't have to sit in a, in a spaceship anymore to get from point A to point B. Once a quant tunnel is set up, why would you go any other way? Now, that's the main thing that uh, obviously gets disrupted by this because the main character in this is an ex-star pilot. Now, star pilots, you know, were the roguish adventurers going and fighting dastardly villains and saving planets and wooing alien women and, and all that sort of stuff you get in, you know, cheesy adventure books, which is also kind of a plot point, the cheesy adventure books is. Um, but pretty much all that got disrupted by, by quant tunneling because... There's no reason for anybody to be going out there just in a ship once a first quantum tunnel set up. They're not needed to get resources anywhere. They're not needed to take diplomats anywhere. Worst case scenario, even if they're going someplace that 
hasn't really been explored before, they can still quad tunnel as far out as they can get, and then it's a short hop. You know, star piloting as a profession, basically dead. Pretty much all any of them do is take people on like little tours of planets, recounting all the stuff that they did back when they were relevant. So obviously it's a big impact on the main character, but Yahtzee did a really good job drilling down to all the different ways this sort of technology would be implemented. Another example is the way storage lockers work. So now, instead of a storage locker being in a building somewhere, it's actually just a hole cut out in the middle of the ground. Like, it's just, it's, you know, same size. It's a locker-sized hole. And, and not, like, hole, like, to the air. Like, in the middle of, of dirt or bedrock, they cut out a hole and build a quan tunnel to it. And you know your quan tunnel combination. So you go to a general use and you go to your locker. <laughs> which is located in some place that nobody ever can get to except via quan tunnel. And so it's, it's things like that. It is the full extent, it is fully looking at every way that this technology could be utilized. And in the later book, like it's being utilized for like a weird sort of, um, a guy's basically got a Swiss army arm because he's got... <laughs> so he's got a mini quan tunnel set up on, on the, this thing on the end of his wrist. And... He has an assistant at to wherever the quantum tunnel is connected to who basically feeds through various tools so he can suddenly, you know, have a gun or a drill or a blowtorch or whatever because it's being fed through the hole by somebody on the other side. So it looks very cool, but then you're like, that's actually kind of clunky, but it's something you could do with that technology. So you somebody would and like i said the full extent of everything that's been disrupted it really goes out because even you know these planets that used to need saving don't really need saving anymore the villains have packed it in because the the whole back and forth and power struggle with the star pilots it's gone it's just made everything very mundane because now you're no longer exploring the furthest reaches of space you're passing through a sparkly archway. And then, you, yeah, I mean, you might as well have just walked down the street. And, then, and like elevators aren't really a thing anymore. People just quantum tunnel up to the floor that they're trying to get to. It's, I'm really impressed at how far he took all the ways that this technology could be used and then really thought about all the people who that would screw over. Because let's be honest, any technological leap usually means the obsolescence of something that we were using up to this point. A technological leap generally means some, it's replacing something that was similar, but not as convenient. And now the technological leaps lets us do that same kind of thing, but better and easier. And guess what? That old thing's gone. And I just, I was really impressed. And I think that that is a neat way to go about creating a a uh, unique spin on a world because like I said the rest of the overall world is not that original it's not that unique it's also not trying to be but he gives it its own flavor just by picking one thing and just going as deep as he can on that one thing that's a pretty neat approach I thought that was really cool from a uh, creative narrative artistic standpoint so those are my thoughts on Yossi Croshaw's novel, We'll Save the Galaxy for Food. I do recommend it. I'm going to recommend it in audio form. The stuff of his that I've listened to so far, it, I've listened to that one, Will uh, Destroy the Galaxy for Cash, and Differently Morphous, uh, all three of which I would recommend and uh, did like quite a bit. I'm hoping he does a sequel to Differently Morphous. I, I would be interested in that. I don't know if he's working on it. I hope so. But uh, yeah. That's my thoughts on that. Have you read or listened to any of Yahtzee Croshaw's fictional work? If you have, what are your thoughts on it? Whatever those thoughts are, drop something on down in the comments. Let's talk about it. You know the usual stuff. Like, subscribe, I have Patreon, etc., etc., etc. All these options, no pressure though, don't worry about it. We take it nice and laid back here.
So just come on back next time you need a break.